Okay, here, Here is the Divis Flats complex in West Belfast. And he is Mr. John Stanley, Minister of State for the Armed Forces, who's come to see for himself just what life is like at the top. This key observation post attracts a large number of visitors, both civilian and military. They'd be very good at the normal part. Executive. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Behag is pointing out some of the local landmarks to the minister. Belfast is a troubled city. There's a large unemployment problem, typified by the giant Harland and Wolf shipyard, now largely idle. But the main problem, never far from the surface, is the violent political division within the community. Religion is the most obvious manifestation of that divide. Although this linking of religion and politics is not welcomed by all church leaders, its influence is undeniable. Therefore, this largely Roman Catholic Divis area is strongly Republican. And just across the Falls Road, this Protestant area is fiercely loyalist. It's a division with its roots deep in history, and down the centuries, attitudes have hardened. Although the situation has improved in recent years, the Royal Ulster Constabulary, charged with keeping the peace, still require the support of the army. Which is how, late in 1986, the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Anglian Regiment, found itself in West Belfast. Young soldiers new to the area found the surroundings familiar but strange. It's, it's like you walk, walk down the street in your own town. It's like going around the town centre or something, but nobody likes you. These young soldiers must be constantly on the alert. Much of their time is spent moving through unfriendly neighbourhoods. They're well aware that any lack of vigilance could result in death or injury. They rely on each other. The only place they can relax is back in their barracks. And even then, not totally. On Tuesday, the sergeant major will be walking around the accommodation. He expects the place to be clean, bins empty, beds made. Those people that aren't sleeping in them, but uh, the rooms have got to be at a high standard. It's a day today, 28th, isn't it? Dear Karen. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I mean, she hasn't even met me yet. She says, I sound like a very nice chap. She works in a plastic factory. <laughs> Weapons and ammunition are kept in their rooms. It's a constant reminder that this is a real operation and each day out on the street they face a real threat. To counter this, they've been given two months of intensive training, backed up in this imperfect world by a neat line in bulletproof vests. A welcome, if somewhat uncomfortable, insurance policy. Let the combat jacket falling apart. <laughs> For those on protection duty, from out of the top of vehicles, a helmet and visor complete this modern suit of armour. The rifle is a soldier's best friend. To make sure it stays that way, once a week, each soldier rechecks his weapon on the pipe range. Basically, it's a large concrete tube with a target at one end and a soldier with rifle at the other. The barracks themselves also need to be kept secure. Besides the usual guards, modern technology can lend a hand. Second stag in here, so I've been here about seven hours now. All together lot. However, while warm and safe, it does have one big drawback. Boring. Overcoming boredom is something that all soldiers face and they all have their own way of tackling it. It's just something to pass the time. Instead of sitting on my bed reading or finding other jobs to do, I'll do something and let the other battalions know that they cut me through all England and been to Gurwood. But the real work of the battalion lies out on the street. Hello. Hello. So to get magazine, magazine on. <laughs> 
gas so in load, so to catch, stick magazine, magazine on, put the handle out, sights, gas regulator. This morning it's a VCP, a vehicle checkpoint. November 2 to Delta and Roger. After they've checked a few vehicles, it's off to another location. Ready, Mac! It keeps everyone on their toes. On patrol, soldiers are tasked to keep their eyes open and report anything out of the ordinary. Normally, however, everything looks very ordinary indeed. Back in the company ops room, the progress of each patrol is closely monitored and any information quickly analysed. Modern technology is fine at producing information, but it's people who have to handle it all. Uh, a blue Renault traffic man, discretion. Oh, of course. Have you brought Dewey's group back in, have you? Yeah. You can tell Tomo that he needs his... Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's patrols west, it's not bad. When the patrols finally return, before they can relax for an hour or two, there's the debrief. Right, okay, keep the noise down. Right, we'll go straight into it. Int task. The int task was to check all tradesmen, all coal lorries, and all milk vans and delivery vans. Tango, one, two, Charlie, did you get any of those? The skip lorry in the divvies. Got a plate. Where is Blake? You, yes, you can be my pen pal. It's all right with me. I don't know though. She's all right. If I was really like that, I'd write in stencils, mate. How many girls she got here? Pen pals, television, and just a little housekeeping all help to pass the time between patrols. What's his name? Blazing Saddles is on today, Last war horse, 10.50. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're busy as a pig, that's what we're talking about. At the end of the day. When she's 80, you'll be what? Looking. I could be seen when she's 80, yeah, Mark. And when it all becomes too much, you can always escape to the Costa del Belfast, just down the corridor. Sometimes the admin and, shall we say, the unpleasant side of stuff happens, and it sometimes gets to people. They don't always enjoy doing fatigues. And even just thinking about them can be fatiguing. No, no. The senior ranks are lucky in having their own mess to relax in. Officers too can relax in the officers' mess while waiting for a meal. Meal times are an important landmark in the day. The army believes in providing the finest ingredients, prepared and presented to be attractive. And the soldiers have their own way of providing that finishing touch. Some prefer a bit of do-it-yourself, cooking their own. And some don't care who's cooked it, as long as there's plenty of it. Home is just a telephone call away, they say. Oh, you just do one of these. Getting to a phone, however, usually means a long wait. While some relax, others carry on. Everyone works long hours, including the commanding officer. Gentlemen, I have just returned from an intelligence meeting with the special branch at RUC Castle Ray. I have the following information which you can pass on to all your soldiers. 
The intelligence is that the provisional IRA have now had another explosive resupply. And they're believed now to have a large quantity of explosives in the city. And they are probably planning a further bombing campaign in the city centre in the new year. They could, of course, also... When the Corps goes out to deal with a suspect device, it's a job for the men of the EOD unit. With years of practice, they go straight into a well-rehearsed routine. As the equipment's prepared, they're briefed by the men already out on the ground. There's a booby trap, some sort of device on there. I don't know exactly what it is. It's also under the back end. Today, it's a job for the wheelbarrow, a rather agricultural term for a very sophisticated piece of radio-controlled equipment. Television cameras on board allow the operator to carefully control its movements. Once the device has been located, they have to decide exactly how to deal with it. In this case, they're going to neutralize it. Stand by! It's now neutralized. The only way to reduce the number of such incidents is to dominate the area, and that's done by men patrolling on the ground with the RUC. Most of the older soldiers have been here before. Younger soldiers, however, are not quite so sure what to expect. It is an anticlimax in the training, you know, something happens every day, like a major incident, like a bomb or a shooting. Uh, yeah, you know, you go out and really nothing, nothing happens at all, really. Yeah, you get wet. You're always training in dog milk. They soon learn that it's a team effort, and they have to rely on the men around them. When you know you've got, you've got all in blokes around you as well to look after you, it's not so bad. You know, but you got, you got to always think on the side side. You got to, you can't slack enough. You're always watching each other. Reminders that they're in unfriendly territory are never very far away. Like children everywhere. These youngsters are friendly and curious, but it won't be long before they learn from their elders just how they ought to behave. Today, this patrol is supporting an RUC vehicle checkpoint. Standing in the pouring rain at a VCP has few compensations. All you can do, perhaps, is to think about the extra money you can take home at the end of the tour. The Nafi is one of the few places that the soldiers can relax together. There's snooker, dance, and for those who want something a little more energetic, squash. Punishing the body can be fun, so they say. This multi-gym enables you to do just that. Some do it to cultivate the body beautiful. <sighs> Others, perhaps, to work up an appetite.
Cleanliness in the kitchen is appreciated, although not necessarily enjoyed, by everyone. Although the menu is interesting and varied, chips and beans are always popular. Everything for the soldiers, from mail to food, has to be brought to them. So it is that armoured potatoes come to be escorted through the streets of Belfast. The fact is, that the soldiers are moving through a largely hostile environment. Travelling about in vehicles and on armed foot patrols, it's not easy to get to know the locals. Some are friendly, some almost certainly are not. For the most part, one can't afford to take chances. What is it? The opposition is orchestrated from behind closed doors, but its results are all too apparent out on the street. Over the years, martyrs to various causes have been created. Today, much of the responsibility for combating the effects of this long and bitter struggle falls to the young soldiers who mature very quickly. The younger soldiers you get nowadays, 17, 18 year old guys, it takes you a couple of years to get a good professional soldier. But out in Ireland, you're talking about that three years training as a professional soldier. You can see uh, a change of within four or six months. Above the city, the Army Air Corps provides a watchful eye. Their capacity for observation, both day and night, can provide accurate and timely information. However, making use of that information is down to the men on the ground, particularly the junior NCOs. The junior NCOs in their brick as a satellite, they've got all the work to do themselves. And so it builds their confidence and improves their command and control as well. Working long shifts, seven days a week, it's easy to lose track of time. Zero, yeah. Tonight, it's New Year's Eve. For most, it's a night like any other. Okay. Just down the corridor, however, a few are able to welcome the new year with a toast appropriate to the Royal Anglian Regiment.